Celtic Fairy Tarot back with another pick a card reading and today we're going to be getting into what brings you joy, what really lights your fire. A lot of times we all have within us um, these sparks that can really go unnoticed and we can really feel not connected to them. Um, whether it's due to responsibility, um, expectation, whatever it may be, we oftentimes feel disconnected from what really brings our soul joy. Uh, so today we're going to get into that. All right, we're going to start with pile one here, and we have a teacup full of white rabbits. <laughs> we have this birth certificate here, this baby dragon birth certificate. And if you guys have never shopped at um, World of Wonder, I highly suggest checking them out. Um, they make these little baby dragons that are adorable. I have four of them. This birth certificate is for Obsidian, and this is pile two. Okay. Then pile three, we have this tattoo ink. All right, and for pile three, we have this bell. All right, take your time, go over the cards, feel which one is calling to you, and the timestamps are down below. Can't wait to get into it. Hi, pile one. All right, so you've chosen the teacup and the ghost dance card. And the ghost dance card talks about your spirituality and creating an altar and really communing with the ancestors. And I feel like one of the biggest things um, that really brings your soul joy is connecting to spirit. Um, but I am feeling, even though we did pick up this card and that is one of the things that really does light your fire, I am feeling a bit of a disconnection um, from spirit right now and I do feel like this has to do with fear. You could be a tarot reader um, trying to pull your own cards right now. You could be um, someone who practices Reiki trying to unblock blockages that you personally have. Um, whatever it is, I feel like there's a little bit of fear disconnecting you from um, your, your spiritual gifts here and it's not a big one. Um, I think this alone, uh, bringing this to the surface, should help break you out of this um, repeating cycle. But I feel like a lot of this is um, not being able to tell the difference between uh, a trigger and an intuitive hit. This is going to be um, something I think you needed to hear, Pile One, and I think it's going to pull you right out of this cycle, okay? Let's see if we can get more details. But I do feel like this is a very spiritually powerful group. Um, no shock here that you pulled the ghost dance, but I feel like it goes deeper than that. I feel like this is like, you knew how to astral travel when you were a, a very small child. This is very, um, worked on spiritual gifts. Okay, let's see. I feel like movies is another thing that really lights your fire. And I feel like it's going to be um, not so much going and seeing movies, but getting inspired by them. I feel like there's an aspect of you that really gravitates to anything creative, artistic. I feel like because it does inspire you to create and be artistic and be in this energy. And when you're in this energy, I do feel you are very connected to Gaia, very earth connected. I feel like an ideal day for you, Pile One, would be sitting at home with a hot cup of tea or coffee, um, with nobody bothering you, painting a painting, taking a break, taking a walk, um, really having no expectations, uh, vibing with the trees, really just a laid back group you are, Pile One. And I feel like your soul really does gravitate um, to the creative, the artistic, and the spiritual. Okay. All right. Spirits of Love and Light, Ancestors of Pile One. What brings Pile One joy? What brings the soul of Pile One joy, please? All right. We have the Seven of Flowers in reverse. Okay. We have the Knight of Teacups in reverse. Okay. 
What brings pile one joy, please? What brings the soul of pile one joy? All right, we have the moon. All right, so I'm getting a very clear message, Pile One, that something um, you may think brings you joy is to keep you busy and to keep yourself active. Um, but the truth is your soul is a little resistant to this um, because I feel like there's an aspect of you that doesn't really like to go deep within two triggers or deep within two wounds um, because I am sensing a little bit of um, untouched wounds um, things you haven't looked at for quite some time. And I feel like a part of your soul can really gravitate towards keeping busy, keeping something um, new on to the next, like when it comes to work or hobbies or um, anything like that. And I feel like this is an illusion um, that your ego wants to put forward that uh, keeping yourself busy really drink brings you joy. Um, constantly doing something brings you joy. But the truth is, pile one, um, I feel like your soul really just loves to be and to exist and be out in nature and have no expectations. Um, there's a real inner peace that comes here with that. Let's see. Let's clarify the seven of flowers in reverse. Okay, we have the tower. Yeah, okay. And we have the ten of teacups in reverse under the knight of teacups uh, in reverse. And I really just feel like this is um, the energy I'm picking up on. I'm picking up on that you really try to distance yourself from um, emotional chaos and keep yourself busy. And I do think that there's a part of you that really feels like this is what brings your soul joy. Um, but I think what really what I'm picking up on and take what resonates obviously but I, I feel like your soul is craving that um simply existing right now um just being in your energy being in the energy of your ancestors really working through um timelines in your life right now and I feel like I didn't intend this reading to have any <laughs> type of healing conversation in it. I really just wanted to uplift the spirits of everybody. Um, but I think that may be something you needed to hear, uh, that it's okay to stop, that it's okay to be peaceful. It's okay to um, simply exist today, pile one. All right, the moon. We have the seven of spears in reverse. Yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of betrayal from the past that you don't want to look at, that you want to keep busy. Maybe there's a part of you that feels like it's in the past, it happened, I, I just want to move on from it. But it's really important to look at it because it's taking up space in your psyche. Um, and this is what's causing the illusion of um, doing, doing things makes me happy, always being busy makes me happy. Because I think it's taking a toll on your body, but it's also taking a toll on your soul pile when your soul just wants to exist and be in their uh, witchy foresty self okay i am also feeling like um <laughs> I, i'm seeing that the house in the tower i feel like feng shui i feel like moving your furniture a lot like around a lot is something that brings your soul joy i think you just like the switch up of energy i am very similar um you just like the switch up of energy every once in a while you may be someone who every couple of months uh moves where their couch is or moves where their bed is or desk or um even small things like plants I feel like you like that change up of energy. All right, what brings pile one soul joy, please? I also feel like trivia makes you happy, pile one. I feel like um, 
using your mind makes you really happy. Uh, whether that's reading books, uh, educating yourself on something new, documentaries, trivia, I feel like using your mind really makes you happy. It makes your soul happy. All right, Ancestors of Pile One, what makes Pile One's soul happy, please? Okay, we have the King of Flowers, uh, but it came out sideways and I'm gonna leave it sideways. And I feel like it's another validation of what I was saying earlier, where I feel like you keep yourself busy to really avoid um, these conversations with yourself or these intrusive thoughts, um, because I feel like sometimes you can get into a space of go, 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 um, succeed, accomplish, and it feels good for you. Um, but then you get into this space where you can feel your soul rejecting this energy and your soul is like, no, I want to sit down. I want to focus on me. I want to do this. Um, for me, I want to be in my inner peace. I want to simply exist. So there's a real back and forth energy here where it comes to that. But I feel like at a soul level, Pile One, you really just love to exist and adventure and be in the woods and seeing like, um, ugh, like just very cottagey energy here. All right, what makes Pile One's soul happy, please? The sun. I love this card. And I was just feeling called to say, if you're feeling um, depressed or anxious or you're just having a really bad day, gravitate towards the creative pile one. Um, that's really where you're going to find your sanctuary, being able to paint, being able to write, being able to um, maybe even just exist in nature. Um, tie little knots with the grass blades, you know, like whatever it is that brings you inner peace. And I really feel like that's what it is. Nature, creativity, spirituality, really connecting back to your roots. Um, I feel like the, this pile is definitely the trees pile, um, the go outside and feel the wind pile, maybe have a tea, maybe have like a tea picnic <laughs> pile one. Cause I feel like this is beautiful energy and it just wants to come out. Um, but I feel like you don't often let yourself get there, um, because you feel you need to keep busy. All right. Ancestors of pile one. What brings pile one soul joy? Yeah, tarot readers out there, put the decks down for a minute, okay? <laughs> um, your ancestors are saying, put the if you're reading your own tarot at the moment, um, put the decks down for a minute and come back to it when you're feeling less emotionally charged about the situation, okay? All right. What brings pile one soul joy, please? All right. We have the five of hedgehogs. Okay, five of hedgehogs, please. Oh, okay. All right, and we have the ten of flowers in reverse. Yes, okay. The emperor. And we have the nine of flowers in reverse. Okay, so I do think that this is a message you needed to hear, Pile One, that you don't need to keep yourself busy. It's okay to turn inward and look at these wounds because um, it's not going to be the end. The end. It's not going to be um, as horrific as I think you think it is, and I think it's going to go by quickly, and you're going to really feel liberated um, by turning in and facing this, and there's going to be a huge creative boost for you. And with the Emperor, I really feel like it's just important, Pile One, um, for you to come into your power when it comes to um, being your advocate um, for your mental health, really speaking your truth out here. Um, with the Ten of Flowers in reverse, I really feel like this is putting the wands down, guys. Um, don't fill your day up with things or put so much on your plate um, to avoid this um, this sitting with yourself. Because it, I'm not going to lie to you, sitting with yourself for the beginning part of this journey um, is not going to be so easy. Um, and there are going to be moments you feel triggered. But once you continue this pattern and once you stay on course, you will be on the path to exactly what your soul needs. And your soul just needs to exist, Pile One. It needs to be out in nature, um, heal and reveal these wounds, um, and really give you the opportunity to grow spiritually. Because I do feel like you have a big mission here. And it's important for you to get back in touch with your intuition, but also get back in touch with the joy that comes with communing with your ancestors rather than the anxiety. 
Um, water gazing without um, drifting off into intrusive thoughts. Um, being able to control and harness um, the way these clairvoyant abilities come through. All right, any last messages, please, for pile one, for what brings pile one soul joy? Smelling laundry, I just saw someone smelling a towel. Um, so it could be just smelling clean, like um, I am someone who loves the smell of pine salt. I don't know why, I just, I love it. So it could be something like that. Um, but just having, I really feel like with moving your furniture in the beginning um, as well. I feel like it's an energetic thing um, to your space. Really catering to your space makes your soul happy. All right. Ancestors of Pile One, please. What brings Pile One joy? All right. We have the King of Spears in reverse. And we're going to clarify this. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so we have the four of hedgehogs and we have the three of spears. Okay, what also makes your soul happy is less material. Um, you could be a minimalist or you could notice if you're in a space that is often cluttered um, that you get a lot of anxiety. Uh, I feel like here... <sighs> There's a there's a want and a need to be free of a lot of material for your soul here. Your soul just kind of want to your soul wants to let it go. Um because I do think that you could suffer from a little bit of a poverty mindset here. Um but that's not true to your soul. That's true to your survival instincts or your conditioning or um I mean really just being a part of this world and society, right? Um but your soul really doesn't need that. Your soul wants to let everything go. Um adventure. Um I'm hearing adventure is out there. I feel like really what your soul needs pile one and I know you know this at a, a core level. Um, it's not to do a bunch of stuff. It's not to, um, really distract yourself. It's not to, um, gain abundance. It really is to exist in the most, uh, minimalistic way with nature. I really feel a strong connection to Gaia here. Um, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's past lives. I don't know, um, if it's this lifetime, if you work with herbs, um, but there's a very strong connection to Gaia here. This is a beautiful energy pile one. All right, we're going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey. Get outside, get into your creative energy, and until next time, bye. Hi, Pile 2. All right, so you have chosen the rainbow and obsidian's birth card here. Um, I do feel like this pile is going to be a little bit different in regards to how the oracle card applies to you um, because the intention for the oracle card really was to give me a little bit of insight into what brings you um, joy, but I feel like this oracle card for you is going to be a message from your ancestors. Um, so we're going to hold that off for one second and I'm just going to get into what I'm already feeling in your current energy. I feel like your soul pile too is a lot like the wind where you love to have new experiences. I feel like you love to travel, you love to go places. Um, much like this baby dragon here, I feel like your soul just flies pile too. And you're in your element when you're learning new things, when you're adventuring, when you are out of your comfort zone. I really feel like pile too. Um, your soul loves to be out of your comfort zone. You like to acclimate to new environments. You love to, to learn about new cultures. There is just a real adventurous um, spark about your soul. Uh, let's see. This is just magical energy. This could be my pile of um, active witches. Uh, this could be my pile of storytellers, um, writers, of books, a lot of like fictional energy here. Like your inner child probably loved to play pretend. I feel like this is a pile of like 
people who may have loved theater as a kid, actors, actresses. I feel like this is like a very inventive, creative, um, your personality, your soul changes like quite frequently. There's a lot of um, evolutions here. There's a lot of growth here. And I feel like your soul just like gravitates to any new experience you can have. Okay. So the rainbow card talks about really persevering um, through a storm. And I feel like your current circumstances may seem stormy, um, but I'm hearing from your ancestors specifically to really observe um, and listen uh, to what's going on around you, to the people around you, to the circumstances around you, and try to see them from a higher perspective with this bird flying here. Um, there's really a higher perspective needed for you um, in whatever it is you're struggling with. It's going to be different for everybody, um, but your ancestors are really coming in with um, these situations need to be seen from a higher perspective, okay guys? Um, but so far, very adventurous energy, very uh, like... I don't really know how to explain it. I feel like if someone was like, uh, I don't have really any money. I have a, a money enough to buy tickets to this other country, but um, we can just sleep on the street and live, in a back, live out of a backpack. And you'd be like, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> and it wouldn't even be a hesitation. You'd just be like, yeah, I want to go. <laughs> Um, and some of you may have circumstances um, in life where you can't just do that, but that is something that your soul really craves. You could have been nomadic in a lot of lifetimes, um, and that's why. All right, let's pull some tarot now. <clears throat> All right, spirits of love and light, ancestors of pile two, please tell me what brings pile two soul joy. What brings pile two's soul joy? All right, we have the ace of hedgehogs. Yeah. And we have justice in reverse. <clears throat> We're gonna continue pulling. Um, with the ace of hedgehogs, I'm gonna read it properly, but I'm also intuitively picking up on the fact that this hedgehog is just chilling, right? <laughs> And I feel like that's your soul. Like no matter where you are, you could be just chilling and admiring life and finding the beauty in everything. Um, really enjoying the ride, the adventure. All right. What brings Pile to soul joy, please? Okay, beautiful. We have judgment. Oh, I understand. Okay. We have Queen of Spears. And we have the Two of Spears. Okay. For the most part, you're a very fluid individual, pile two. Um, for the most part, you can really roll with anything, acclimate to anything, but you also have this part of you that is no nonsense here, right? Like, definitely no nonsense. Um, and I feel like with this two of spheres, this could come from trauma. Um, and I feel like there's... There could be a part of you, um, and I can really empathize with this part of your journey right now, there could be a part of you that fears the unknown a little bit because of trauma, um, but your soul is really craving it, like really craving it. Um, and I feel like sometimes it may be difficult for you to step out of that comfort zone now that um, a lot more life has happened. Um, but something that really does bring your soul joy is getting out there, experiencing new things, um, participating in the new things. Like, I feel like your soul just wants to see and um, be a part of everything that this planet has to offer. All right, Ace of Hedgehogs, please. With this Ace of Hedgehogs, um, reading this card properly now, I feel like with you, it's it's important for you to have like a few things of yours um, that bring you comfort, but for the most part, you're really okay with starting over. Um, 
you're really okay with, all right, I'm done with this and now I want to move on to this, or I'm done with this house and I want to move on to this house, or I'm done with this car and I want to move on to this car, I'm done with this um, article of clothing and I want to move on to the next. I feel like you don't, you don't hoard your things, you don't hoard your experiences, you really are just, I'm seeing like water flowing, like a river flowing, and I feel like that's you in life, pile two. It just brings your soul joy to be able to know um, that everything happens for a reason and you're going going somewhere that you're meant to be going. I feel like, like I said before, sometimes you can um, get stuck and lost in this storm. Um, but I feel like for the most part, you can get out of it. You break yourself out of it quite easily. All right. Ace of Hedgehogs, please. I'm seeing like dancing too, like tribal dancing. So you could be someone no matter what um, ethnicity you are, what culture you come from, um, that really likes um, the tribal dancing of other cultures um, or the music or the way it makes your body feel. Um, your soul really likes that. All right, Ace of Hedgehogs, please. All right, we have the Seven of Flowers under the Ace of Hedgehogs. Justice, please. All right, and the Six of Flowers. Wow, under justice. Okay, so this is exactly what I was saying before. Your soul, like at a core level, even without all the conditioning and without the trauma, your soul loves the competition of restarting. Um, and it's not a competition with anybody else. It's a competition with yourself. Like, okay, now I'm in this environment. Let's go. <laughs> or like, now I'm in this environment. Let's go. Your soul thrives off of that. Um, really competing with yourself is something that brings you joy. And with the six of flowers, which would be the six of wands under the justice in reverse the reason that you're so laid back pile two um when you are not feeling triggered is because you understand the process of law and attraction you understand the process of karma um and you understand that everything that happens to you is not personal um and with the six of flowers you know that you'll be victorious and successful in whatever you're doing despite um any injustice that is done to you and like i said sometimes the the human brain can be wonky and sometimes you can get stuck in these triggers but for the most part you know pile pile two you know who you are you know where you're going um and a lot of that human ego stuff doesn't deter you judgment please All right, we have the two of teacups in reverse under judgment. We have the page of flowers. We have the magician, okay. Loud and clear, heard that. And we have the world, okay. Um, what really brings your soul joy pile to is to meet other like-minded, creative, um, adventurous individuals. Um, because I feel like a lot of life you have not come across those people. And with the two of teacups in reverse under judgment, I feel like you have developed more of a relationship to spirit than to anybody else on this planet <laughs> um, is the way that I'm going to put it. And it, it doesn't mean that you are not connected with other individuals and it doesn't mean that that's not a powerful connection. But I feel like the person you trust the most is spirit, your ancestors. Um, I feel like for you, pile two... Um, really working on your root chakra and getting back to this mindset that your body is your home is going to really pull you out of these cycles um, that you can get stuck in sometimes due to trauma or triggers. Which with the page of flowers, it's just again, that creative, magical, childlike energy. I feel like you definitely loved playing um, pretend as a child. Um, you probably pay <laughs> played pretend way longer than other children did. Um, you could be storytellers, you could be writers, you could be bloggers. Um, again, I feel like this could be a group of active um, witches as well. 
Um, there's just a lot of different energies here, but it's all equally as magical and childlike. I just really feel like this is an inner child prominent pile. Let's see if we can get any more here. Okay. Ancestors of Pile 2, please, what brings Pile 2's soul joy? Um, oof. I just saw, <laughs> okay, um, we have the page of hedgehogs in reverse. I just saw, um, I've honestly been hearing a lot about Titanic recently and I just watched it and I just heard about it in another reading. Um, I think it was Lexi Lyon, uh, Lexi the Leo, um, and she mentioned Titanic and I just saw where Jack screams at the head of the boat, um, when it first takes off. And I feel like, oh, that's like, you could love like singing. You could be the person in the crowd. That's like the loudest, um, using, putting your voice out there is something that your, your soul really enjoys. Um, <laughs> vocally making a mark around you um, is something that your soul enjoys. With the page of hedgehogs in reverse, we're going to clarify this. Okay. I feel like I don't really want to get into too much of the healing because I feel like you guys need just a bit of an uplifting break. Um, but I feel like this flow energy, this river flowing energy could have come from childhood where you needed to acclimate to different environments um, rather quickly. Um, but it is something I think your soul, I don't want to say your soul chose, um, but it is something that your soul was used to in the first place. So while ha while in this lifetime, um, it could have been a catalyst for you. I feel like this is your core added soul anyway. All right, page of hedgehogs in reverse, please. Like literally I'm shuffling and I'm just skinning through your energy and I, I feel so resonant um, with this pile because I feel like you're the people who would like, I don't know, like me, like go to Ireland and stand on the edge of a cliff in an old vintage Irish dress just because you can and you can pretend to put yourself there. And I feel like this is such um, a beautiful, creative energy and your soul loves to be in that energy. The more you can get out there and play, um, the happier you are at your core pile too. Page of Hedgehogs, please. All right, we have the Eight of Spears. Yeah, I feel like your soul doesn't like to be isolated, pile two. Your soul doesn't like to be um, feeling stuck. Your soul likes to travel. Your soul likes to adventure. Your soul likes to grow. Your soul likes to learn. <laughs> you like to be go, go, go. This is very different um, energy from pile one. Very different. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a similar message. Um, so you may find some messages in pile one for you, but I think for the most part, it's a really completely opposite energy. It's, it's, um, you love the new adventure. You love to wake up and be like, what is something new I can do today? What is something I can go do today? What is something I can get done today? Um, a real, even though it's flowing energy, it's like, um, it's kind of like a magically manic energy, right? <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it other than that. Um, but it's beautiful. All right, we're gonna leave that here for you, pile two. Um, remember, stay in this creative energy, keep putting your soul out there, and until next time, bye. Hi, pile three. Okay, so I can already tell um, by the energy here in the Sorcerer card that this is going to talk a lot about your shadow self, um, but for a very specific reason. Because first of all, if anybody needed to hear this, your shadow self is amazing. <laughs> um, your shadow self is very powerful, and we oftentimes think of our shadow as something bad or negative, and that's not the case at all. Your shadow can be amazing, powerful, liberating, um, can help liberate others. There there are so many amazing things about the shadow um, that we really don't understand, but I think a lot of times um, 
when our shadow is rejected by others because um, I'll use the example that I've used in another pick a card reading. Um, imagine you're an adopted Viking baby in a family of angels, right? <laughs> um, you're going to have a very powerful shadow side, but um, the, the angel, the, this angelic family is not going to know how to deal with that, right? So a lot of times our shadow selves, um, we reject them and we act, um, out of anger because of this rejection. It's almost like our shadow self feels rejected. So now we have to do this 10 times harder. Um, so you could have been the teenager that was like really rebellious or um, even the young adult who was really rebellious. Um, and if you were any, if you were at any point wondering why this is, why your shadow self might be so active, um, it's because I think the intention this lifetime for you is to have your shadow self in the forefront, um, whether that's for healing, whether that's for liberating others. In one way or another, your shadow self is meant to be seen. Um, and I think you've really gotten into a habit of suppressing this um, out of the comfortability of others. But I think it's important that you allow this shadow out and you allow, obviously in a healthy way, obviously in a productive way, not a dangerous way. Um, but I feel like you already know that pile three. I feel like you probably have a lot of tattoos, um, very creative. You probably paint, you probably draw, sketch. Um, I'm hearing charcoal specifically. Um, very spiritually connected. I feel like this is my pile of ancient warriors in past lives. Just a lot of strength, um, a lot of wisdom, a lot of action here. A lot of, there's no fear. There's not a lot of fear within this pile, pile three. Um, you could be dealing with one or two issues that you struggle with, but I feel like for the most part, you're not afraid. Um, of a whole lot of things, pile three. And what really brings your soul joy is to let your shadow self explore the world, to let your shadow self out, to plant the seeds that you need to plant. Um, because again, I feel like over time, we can really turn away from our shadow because we feel like there's something wrong with it. Um, and usually that's the case when the shadow is being suffocated and it's not being spoken about and it's not being communicated um, and your needs are not being communicated. Um, I need help with this or I'm feeling this way or these are my triggers. Um, and your shadow self um, can really sabotage should it go in the direction of being oppressed. But I feel like your soul pile three just really wants to let your shadow thrive okay let's see if we can but if you're someone who um i don't know you do something out of um anger or when your shadow is triggered and then you're like oh why did i do that this is why um because you are suppressing this shadow out of the comfortability and needs for others until it all boils over and it just comes out um, so let's see if we can get anything deeper onto what brings your soul joy, because I feel like there has been a little bit of healing, um, talked about in each pile here, but I'm really trying to steer more towards the positive and the uplifting, um, because I do plenty of healing videos and I just want to bring you guys a little dose of sunshine today. So let's see what we can get here. All right, spirits of love and light, ancestors of pile three, please tell me what brings pile three joy. What brings pile three joy, please? We have the tower. Okay. We have the chariot in reverse. What brings pile three soul joy, please? And we have the emperor. Yeah, I feel like a lot of what brings your soul joy, pile three, is being in the good fight. <laughs> and I don't really know how else to say that. Um, you're a soldier in one way or another um, in past lives. It could potentially be in this lifetime as well. Um, but I feel like your what brings your soul joy is being out there and fighting for those who need a voice and fighting for those who need um, physical presence. And I feel like... Um, a lot of times that can be misunderstood from you um, by other people and it can really cause you to act out in a, in a sabotaging way. I feel like earlier in life, this could have been an issue for you. This is something you may have been able to move past, uh, but maybe something you needed to rehear today. I don't know, but I do feel like your soul um, at its core loves to be um, 
in that energy of fighting for others, in that energy of using your mind and strategy and your physical body to really help liberate other people um, from whatever is happening in their circumstances. Those who feel like they can't move forward, you want to be there to be like, okay, I got you. Let's go. Um, I've got your hand and really help pull these people forward. But I, I think oftentimes these people um, who don't want to come out of their comfort zone can take this um, the wrong way um, and can take it as you're too aggressive or you're too hostile. And then after that, your shadow is just kind of like, mm, well, okay, <laughs> you want to see aggressive and hostile. Um, but I feel like that's not you at your core. I feel like you at your core just really wants to go in the trenches and pull people out. Um, but a lot of times that could be misunderstood. Let's see. Let's clarify the tower, please. Like it really does bring your soul joy. Like you could be someone who likes to do paintball as a hobby or um, I don't know. It's just a real like you like tactical. You like to use your mind. You like to um, really stand up for others. Uh, fight the good fight is all I keep hearing in my head. Fight the good fight. <laughs> the tower, please. We have the Ten of Teacups in reverse. We have the Six of Teacups in reverse. And we have the Queen of Flowers in reverse. Yeah, I feel like a lot of times when you are triggered, when your shadow self is triggered or feels rejected, um, there can really be an explosion. And whether this is emotionally, um, whether this is mentally, whether this is physically, I feel like it's difficult for you um, when your shadow side does get rejected because I feel like it is powerful, but I feel like it's been happening to you so much in life, Pile 3, that now there's a bit of a resentment. Like, okay, I went down into the trenches and I reached my hand out for you. Um, you're not taking it, but I take that personally. Um, and this is something I can resonate with as well. I feel like this is really the first time in every single pile so far I've had to take a message. Um, but I feel like for you, it's really important for your soul to not oppress and suffocate your shadow self pile three, because your shadow self is meant to thrive and express yourself and bring, um, perspectives into this world and plant seeds within people um, that really take this shadow self energy, really take this, embody this, um, how do I explain it? It's just deep. It's deep. I don't really know how else to explain that, but it's, it's a very, um, it's your shadow self very much at the forefront here um, and needing to be at the forefront. Um, and like I said, a lot of us think about our shadow sides as um, bad or negative, and sometimes they can be toxic in individuals. But I feel like your shadow self is not a toxic shadow self pile three. It's just a misunderstood one. Um, and I think that over time, you've really learned to suppress that um, to make others comfortable. Um, but we're, what really is going to bring your soul joy is liberating that shadow self and really standing in your power pile three. All right. Ancestors of Pile 3, what brings Pile 3 joy, please? All right, we have the Ten of Hedgehogs in reverse. And the Ace of Teacups in reverse. And we're going to um, clarify this Ten of Hedgehogs in reverse. No, I'm sorry, we're going to clarify the Ace of Teacups because I feel like I already know what this Ten of Hedgehogs in reverse is. I feel like, like I said, you like to go into the trenches. It brings your soul joy. There are people who... Um, run into a burning building to grab a complete stranger because they want to save this stranger where they are terrified the whole time. And they're like, I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I'm in there. But they do something heroic and they save somebody. I feel like you rather are the person that is excited to run into the burning building to save this person. I feel like it makes you resonate with past lives. It makes you feel powerful um, in all good ways. And I feel like you really just love that energy of protecting others and saving others. We're going to clarify this Ace of Teacups, but I feel like that's kind of going to be the same thing, bringing people back from loss, depression, uh, bringing people back from the brink. Yeah. Ace of Teacups in reverse, please. <laughs> 
I feel like I can hear some of you going, um, yeah, I do this, but I don't necessarily want to. And I feel like this pushback, this resentment doesn't come from your soul. It comes from the fact that people have um, swatted your hand away when you've tried to help. And I feel like there's just a part of you that resents that and is rather done with it. Um, but your soul continues to love this. Your soul continues to want to gravitate um, towards people that need you. All right, Ace of Teacups in reverse, please. Okay. We have the moon in reverse. We have the three of teacups. And we have the five of spears in reverse. Yeah. Ugh, this is like, if I was thinking about like the walking dead, it reminds me of the walking dead, your energy, right? Like it reminds me of like, I'm not somebody who believes, um, that there should be, uh, only specific people of the group that defend a mass because I feel like everybody should learn how to defend themselves. I'm definitely, um, if I was going to be an alpha, I would have everybody know how to defend themselves because what if you can't be there, right? Um, but I feel like you're that person as well. Like you're the person who's like, um, I don't know. I feel like I can't pick a specific character because I feel like it's it's a little bit of everything. Like when Carol is to teaching the children how to shoot guns um, to learn to defend themselves, everybody disagrees with it. Um, but she's not necessarily wrong because we do see le later in the season that it would have been useful if they knew how to defend themselves. So I feel like, again, your soul is really misunderstood by the masses, um, but it's something that's needed on this planet here. And it's something that's needed in very specific people's lives. And these are probably the people that swat your hand away, um, that need you the most. And this doesn't mean you are obligated to help them. It doesn't mean you're obligated to go into the trenches. But again, I do see at a soul level, this is something you love doing. You love um, because you have the education for it. You, I feel like you've been living lifetimes where you were the warrior or you were in poverty or you climbed out of this situation or climbed out of this. So I feel like you're the ultimate survivor soldier pile three. This is really what this feels like. And it brings you joy to pass that wisdom on. It brings you joy to keep the people you love safe, to keep really even strangers safe. I feel like, I feel like you would, you would go out of your way to help somebody you don't know. Uh, and it would really bring you joy to do so. All right, any last messages, please? Um, ancestors of Pile 3, what brings Pile 3 joy? What brings the soul of Pile 3? Okay. All right, we have the two of hedgehogs, um, and this came out sideways here, and I'm going to leave it at the top because I do feel um, the, the, the half of you in this group who are like, I'm really just done with this. Um, I, I clicked on this video to see what I could gravitate to to bring my soul joy and this is not it because people keep swatting my hands away. Um, but I really think your shadow self is crying out, Pile 3, that um, they need to be seen, they need to be heard, and they need to be respected uh, because I feel like for too long um, this resentment has grown um, and it's really in need of boiling over now. And like I said, in a healthy way, um, writing, uh, confronting people who make you feel small, things like that. Um, we're going to pull you a bit of ancestor messages here because I feel like you do need a little bit of a pick me up. These people, um, the, the half of the group that is resonating with not wanting any part of this. Um, so I do want to give you a little bit of a pick me up. And while I'm pulling these, I'm going to see what I can get in your energy without the cards. Um, this is just a very clear, um, cry for help from your shadow self pile three. Okay. All right, all right. Messages from the ancestors of pile three, please. I feel like a lot of you, um, it brings your soul joy to, uh, how do I say this? Like do your makeup, do your hair. Um, some of you could do like crazy makeup or crazy hair, like crazy, wonderful, magical, right? Um, some of you could uh, create your own clothing, um, like sew your own clothing. Um, some of you could, I feel like there's just an element of 
a talent you have that's shocking. Like when you tell people about it, they're like, oh my goodness, I've never seen anything like this before, or you're so talented at this. Um, and I really am feeling hands-on um, relating to people when it comes to makeup and hair. So there could be some people in here that do hair and makeup. All right, it isn't really our choices who make us who we are. It is our commitment to them. I feel like your shadow self is just asking for pile three, a little bit of um, acceptance here um, and real honesty when it comes to how you're feeling. All right, you are a sacred and divine being. Never let anyone tell you otherwise. Yeah, I feel like people have put down your shadow self, um, but your shadow self is really here to do some amazing, wonderful, good things, okay? Imagine a powerful deity concerned with how others perceive them. Stop that. Yes, stop that. Maybe this was just what's going to bring you joy, just to liberate it. Maybe we can let that shadow self out now. Um, obviously, again, I want to say in a healthy, healthy way, um, everybody is safe in the process. But again, I feel like you already know that, Pile 3. You're so gentle. It's not even like your shadow self is powerful, like, grr, right? Like, it's just powerful in general um, and very connected to your inner child. You jump, I jump, right? Okay. Hakuna Matata. I feel like this you jump, I jump, right? Is um, for anyone. This is about a romantic connection, I feel. We just have to love people for who they truly are and hope that they love us too. Okay. All right. Messages for pile three from the ancestors. I feel like um, a lot of people in this pile could make crafts as well, like dream catchers, um, beaded jewelry. There's there's a lot of different elements of uh, creating with your hands here too. Close your eyes and breathe deep. What colors or visuals do you see? Beautiful. A message from the ancestors for pile three. Thank you. All right. It's what you do right now that makes a difference. Beautiful. We fall so that we can learn to pick ourselves back up again. Um, one thing I need to mention, pile three, is you have a big life purpose here. And part of learning how to walk the path of that purpose is learning how to stand in your power even when everyone is against you, okay? Learning how to not falter um, just because other people perceive things differently than your shadow does, okay? And no blaming the shadow. Um, you are in incredibly evolved as a soul. Um, like I said, you have fought battles many lifetimes. I feel like there's probably lifetimes that you have been politicians. I feel like there's just a very intelligent um, fierceness that comes with your shadow, but it's also very protective. It's like, um, I feel like you could really gravitate towards children and animals. Um, it's like, how do I explain this? It's like the Mandalorian with the little baby, right? Like that's literally what your energy feels like. The Mandalorian is so sweet to this little baby, right? But mess with this baby and you don't get the sweet Mandalorian. And that's kind of what this feels like. You're here to protect others and there's a need. You may be going through karmic cycles that are teaching you how to stand in your power even when you feel like everybody has turned their back or is turning away or doesn't, um, doesn't see where you're coming from. Okay, let's see if I can just pick up on your energy um, before we go, just to give you a couple little, um, I do know that tattoos make your soul very happy. <laughs> um, definitely make your soul very happy. I feel like the process makes you happy. I feel like you could be someone who meditates when they get a tattoo. They just kind of zone out. Um, it could be like therapy to you. I feel like there's just, what brings your soul joy, pile three, is being in your power. Being in your power brings your soul joy. Being like, mm, I know who I am. <laughs> and I hope that I was at least a little bit able to help liberate that for you today, okay? All right, we're going to leave that here. Remember the powerful deity you are, okay? Um, until next time, I wish you the best of luck. Bye. Hi, Pile 4. All right, you have chosen the Holy Mountain and the Silver Bell here. And with the Holy Mountain being all about vision quests, I'm seeing something very 
specific. You are somebody who follows the spiritual breadcrumbs. You are somebody that could dedicate an entire day to communing with spirit. Honestly, there is definitely another pile here for you, pile four. If you were um, struggling choosing between piles, uh, there definitely could be another pile here for you. I feel like you're someone that follows the breadcrumbs. Um, there could be a, a movie quote that pops into your head or a book that pops into your head or whatever it is, you really follow those breadcrumbs. Um, <laughs> if you know, you know, it's really difficult to explain. But like, let's say you're driving in the car and you hear on the radio um, some random advertisement and it says the sign will be at the end of the road. Um, your brain would go, oh, okay, now I have to look at what's at the end of the road. <laughs> so it's like, kind of like that you follow the breadcrumbs. That's something that really makes your soul happy vision quests. Um, definitely fond of out of body experiences your soul. Um, evolving spiritually, finding the hidden meaning to things. Um, you could really resonate with uh, wanting to know more about Atlantis. There's just like a real vision questy energy about you. I don't, I don't really know how to go more into detail without pulling some cards, but um, it's definitely a wise energy. Like you, this is not the first lifetime you've done this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Moving your body is something that makes your soul happy as well. This could be dance, this could be hiking, um, this could be yoga, uh, this could be running, whatever it is, moving your body really makes your soul happy. I feel like you can become really stagnant um, without music in your life and without movement in your body. Um, you can fall victim to becoming really depressed, um, really anxious. Uh, it really, it, it, it takes its toll on you is what I'm feeling. Because I do feel um, like you're very much energetically connected. And when you're not moving your body, I do feel like the sponge that you are um, does pick up other energies. And they do just stay stagnant in there unless you're releasing them. A good way to do that is yoga, um, chakra dancing, anything like that. Even just going for a walk outside, okay? Spirits of love and light, ancestors of pile four. What brings pile four soul joy? We have the ace of teacups. Um, <laughs> this is interesting because I feel like with your anxiety and conditioning, um, you can fall victim to a bit of social anxiety, but I feel like at your core, your soul loves functions, your soul loves parties, um, your soul loves meeting new people, being in an environment where you can um, meet new energies. And I feel like while you may have a bit of anxiety doing so right now, um, it is really something your soul gravitates to. And I'm not saying that your soul is interested in um, be ar being around um, toxic individuals or things like that, but it's like new experiences, new environments, new people, new perspectives is the biggest thing. Um, you love having, if you're at a dinner party and there's in-depth conversation about aliens, forget it. <laughs> that is your jam, right? Okay, let's see. What brings pile for his soul joy, please? Okay, we have the six, six of hedgehogs. Beautiful. We have the two of spears and we have the ace of spears in reverse. Okay, yeah, what really makes your soul happy is open-minded individuals. Um, people who reciprocate that fun-loving, um, curious, adventurous, vision questy, soul growth energy. You definitely um, gravitate to and love spending time with those individuals. Um, those who challenge your thought process, those who make you think deeper into things, those who um, can really pick up and carry on the depth of conversation that you're used to, that lights your fire completely. Um, you could be someone who does podcasting or uh, public speaking. Uh, you just, you love it when you can talk about the, uh, deep things that you resonate with, whatever that is, it's going to be different for everybody individually. Some, it could be psychology, some, it could be, um, extraterrestrial, some, it could be paranormal. Um, it could be really anything. Okay. 
I think one thing that does bother you pile for is when people talk out of ignorance, <laughs> like when people say things, but they don't have uh, the information to back it up. Cause you're like, wait a minute, I've done the research here <laughs> because I do. I feel like you go down the rabbit holes. I'm honestly surprised you didn't pick pile one. <laughs> Um, but that just goes to show how intuitive you are, right? Like you knew this was your pile, but I feel like you just love to go down rabbit holes. All right. Ace of two cups. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. We have the six of, I mean, I mean the seven of flowers, which would be the seven of wands on its side. And we're going to leave it there. And we also have the 10 of teacups on its side and we are going to leave it there. Okay. I feel like your, your soul is very protective of your reality. And I feel like what, what lights your soul is when you can plant seeds within people, when you can enlighten people. Um, like I said, this, this feels like, um, people on people doing Ted talks, um, motivational speaking, uh, life coaching, those types of things bring you so much joy. When you can help wake people up to their potential, when you can help wake people up to the magic of the world, um, really lighting people's spark is something that your soul loves to do. Gatherings, it's really contradictory of the social anxiety, but again, I think the social anxiety is um, a conditioning rather than a part of your soul, okay? Ace of teacups, please. Because I feel like your soul is very much extroverted. Ace of teacups. Okay, we have the five of teacups. We have the knight of spears in reverse. We have the five of hedgehogs in reverse. The ten of flowers in reverse. We have the five of flowers in reverse. We have the nine of spears in reverse and the ace of hedgehogs. Yeah, I feel like you're incredibly fiery and protective of um, your reality and what it is you're trying to create and bring into this world. I feel like your vision quest is specific to you individually. I feel like whoever picked this pile, I hope you find each other one day um, because I really do feel like each rabbit hole you're going down is a specific rabbit hole. And there could be some of you that go down more than one. Um, but like I said, I feel like for some of you, it's going to be psychology very specifically, extraterrestrial, uh, extraterrestrial very specifically, um, mediumship specifically. So it could be different. Um, and I feel like I hope you find each other one day because... <laughs> the things that you all could accomplish together. I just feel like if somebody throws you out of this um, vision quest or if there's shallow conversation, you just move as far away from that individual as you can because it makes you feel confused. It makes you feel conflicted um, when other people make you question your reality. And a lot of times, if it is coming from a place of ignorance where they just don't know and they're kind of inventing comebacks for your perspective, it can really throw you off your track. It can really... Um, if we flip this upright, it can really cause you to pick up wands that don't belong to you or re-go back down rabbit holes um, that you don't need to go back down um, just to prove a point because these people will come to their conclusion at some point. But I feel like it, it can really... <sighs> It can really cause an anxiety within you when somebody brings forth... Um, how do I say this? When somebody questions your beliefs, it feels almost like they're robbing you of your magic to you. Um, so this is where the protecting your energy comes in. And this is really important because like I said, there's going to be, there's going to be an aspect of you. This feels like questioning your reality frequently because of the rabbit holes you go down and because what you're interested in pile four has two very different, like we have the black nails and the white nails, right? Like two very different, um, perspectives. And again, this could be about uh, the church. This could be about politics. This could be about spirituality, but it's almost like uh, you're being called to stand in, stay in your power pile four when you are questioned by those who don't have all of the facts, those 
sheep who think they know what they're talking about but don't <laughs> and I know that that's not a very nice way to explain it um, but been there done that and been thrown off my track far too long by people who don't care to do um, the educating and at some point it becomes offensive and I can I can empathize with this because you do all the work you want to help humanity you want to fix these problems but then you're met with resistance um, where resistance doesn't need to be met um, and I think that really what lights your soul on fire is finding ways around this, um, educating yourself as much as you can on these topics, going into vision quests, out of body experiences, um, going as deep down the rabbit hole with each one of these topics as you can. That really brings your soul joy. You could have been like an investigator in a past life. You could, you could be an investigator in this life or a police officer or a detective or, um, something of the sort. I feel like there's just like a gotta get to the truth, gotta get to the truth is the energy I'm feeling. Uh, it, this could be real whistleblowing energy as well. You could have been a whistleblower in a past life or this life. <laughs> um, but I really feel like what brings your soul joy, pile four, is the truth. The truth in spirituality, the truth in psychology, the truth in um, really anything. The truth is what brings you joy. Being able to come to the conclusions, being around people, um, changing people's perspectives, planting seeds within them. This is really what brings you joy. <laughs> and baths, bubble baths. Yeah, I just heard that <laughs> very specifically. Um, yeah, and bubble baths. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, I think that I'm going to pull you. I didn't do this with any of the other decks, but I'm really feeling called to pull you a gentle, gentle creatures card here. I feel like animals could really bring you joy as well. Um, you could have quite a few animals. You could want to have quite a few animals. Um, you could work as a veterinarian, a marine biologist. I feel like real deep connection to animals here. Let's see. Ancestors of Pile 4. What brings Pile 4's soul joy, please? Harbinger. Okay. Yeah, you search for the truth, Pile 4, and you find so much joy in it. Um, this is like lawyer <laughs> energy. Um, lawyer energy, finding the truth, seeking the truth. Um, but it's uh, like like private investigator, like a PI. You could like watching like the Law and Order shows just for fun. There's like a real truth seeking element about you. And on top of that, there's this spiritual essence as well. So it's like very much active in the 3D, but it's also very much active in the 4D. I mean, the 5D, where you are um, working through your spirituality, working through out of body experiences. <clears throat> you could be someone who purposely tries to have lucid dreams. Um, because you thrive in the unknown. You thrive in uh, the seeking more. This is a beautiful energy. Let's see if I can get any more here. I feel like bats um, could be um, strongly in your energy right now. Um, the bats, the spirit animal. Let's see. I feel like you're also someone who's not afraid to go into the dark, um, to look at the darker aspect of things. I feel like sounds also bring you happiness. You know what I'm, I'm seeing? Um, Madison, Esotero brought it up in one reading. It was August Rush, the movie. Um, if you've never seen it, I highly suggest watching it. Um, he hears music everywhere. He's like a musical prodigy. Um, and he'll be walking down the street and someone will be clanking a trash can or a car will be going by and he hears music and everything. And I kind of feel like that's like you pile for, um, but a little bit different. It's almost like the way noises hit your ears either feels good or feels bad. I don't know how to explain that. Oh, that just kind of came out. I don't know how to explain that, but it's really magical. It's like you're very in tune with your body and you're very in tune with your spirituality at the same time. It's really difficult to go down all these rabbit holes and stay grounded, but I feel like you have the ability to stay grounded pile four. I feel like there's also a part of you 
that really likes to be, <laughs> how do I explain this? While there is this extroverted side of you, um, when we talk about a vision quest, it's really kind of going out into nature and being with yourself. And I feel like if you don't do this every so often, um, the energy of others can really compile in your aura, in your energy. Um, like I said, it can really throw you off course when others have a different belief or opinion than you. And it's not because um, you are threatened by them and it's not because you don't want them to have your own opinion or you don't want to hear the opinion it's just kind of another moment like wait now I feel like my reality is not my reality or now I, like especially if it's coming from someone who's not educated on the situation it can really throw you into a fit because you're like well I did this research and what you're saying doesn't make sense but they're saying what you're saying doesn't make sense and there's really a conflicting energy so there's part of you that may shut down socially in situations because of this um, but your soul really enjoys the the <laughs> back and forth the educating the planting seeds because while these people may um, push back and disagree with you you've you've planted the seed anyway. They will be thinking about that conversation for months after that. And that's just what you don't know. You really, you really help plant the seed within them, whatever it is you're trying to get across. Like I said, it's going to be different for everybody. Some psycho psychology, um, some law, some spirituality, um, some political, but I really feel like it's important, and I think your ancestors really want to get across, um, that you don't have to be thrown off your course if somebody has a different perspective, especially if you know it's a perspective that is not educated, okay, Pile 4? All right, we're going to pull you some messages from your ancestors just as a little um, send-off because I do feel like we talked more about healing than I would have liked to in this reading. Um, so while I'm shuffling these, I'm going to try to pick up just random things in your energy that make your soul happy. Um, there were two piles that had a little more healing than I would have liked because I really just want to bring you guys some joy um, for today. I do do quite a bit of healing. So I wanted this to be really lighthearted. Um, and now that we've gone through the heavier part of this reading, we are going to go into the lighthearted part of this reading. I feel like in your energy pile four, it's very much like Miss Honey um, and Matilda morphed into one. It's like your present self is Miss Honey, but your inner child is Matilda. Like, I don't really know how to explain this. Um, whether you're, whatever gender you resonate with being, I feel like it's like a morph of this powerful truth-seeking um, being in my power energy mixed with this very soft, gentle, um, wanting to, to educate others energy. Oh, I did see someone. I saw it flipped over in here. I do want it. There we go. There is a benefit to losing. You get to learn from your mistakes. I think also when you have these situations with people um, really confronting your reality or wanting to tear down your reality, um, really listening to those individuals instead of trying to push your point is going to help you further push your point in the future, if that makes sense. Um, don't take it so personally, Pile 4, okay? All right, messages from Pile 4's ancestors, please. Stop analyzing your life and start living it. All right. Thanks for the adventure. Now go have a new one. You don't get bonus points for pretending to care. Dive deeper. <laughs> I feel like this has to do um, with how you... Let's see. How do I explain this? We're going to clarify that. We know that you just want to feel safe, honey. We've got you. Yeah, I feel like for a lot of you, this might have to do with politics. There isn't, there. this one isn't like the others. This one is everything you wished for. Beautiful. I'm still here with you. I come to visit you as a cat. And we have, this is going to be a grand adventure. Yeah, I heard a whistle blow again. So you could be someone 
um, wanting to whistleblow politics or psychology, whatever it is, I feel like your ancestors are 100% behind you. Um, but there needs to be a switch in how you deal with um, people who push back on your concept, whatever that concept is. Um, let's clarify. Please clarify this. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> Okay. Queen of Hedgehogs. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I understand it. Okay. So, um, I think your approach to others can sometimes become a little bit off-putting only because of, how do I say this, their approach towards you. Um, your ancestors really want to get you to a space where if someone's pushing back, it doesn't allow you to get out of your energy, um, out of your seed planting energy. Um, and it doesn't give anybody else the opportunity to push your buttons. Okay, pile four. All right. Um, because you've got some stuff to do this lifetime. <laughs> and I feel like, like I said, it can really throw you off your path. Like, oh my gosh, they said that. Am I right? Am I wrong? Is everything that I've, I've learned not true? Um, and that's not the case, pile four. It just means they haven't done their research. Okay. Messages from Pile Four's ancestors. Yeah, some people will inspire you and some people will drain you. Choose wisely, Pile Four. Choose wisely who you're planting these seeds within because sometimes we just need to move on from trying to plant these seeds, okay? Shock everyone and make it happen. You will. I know you will. Check in with your body as often as you can. Drink some water, Pile Four. And what we can do is determined by us and us alone. You hold the power within. Beautiful. I feel like you've got this pile for. You've absolutely got this. Um, in terms of what brings you joy, truth seeking, education, um, really learning new things, uh, learning about your surroundings, learning how to talk to other people, getting into these really deep meaning of life conversations with people, that brings your soul joy, okay? All right, we're going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on this journey. Keep seeking that truth down those rabbit holes. Okay, Pile 4? Bye.